So the Prophet ﷺ is reciting the verses. For example, إِذَا الشَّمْسُ كُوِّرَتْ Whoa, what happened there? Let me tell you what happened. The kuffar of Mecca used to say, don't listen to this Quran. Don't listen to it. وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَا تَسْمَعُوا لِهَذَا الْقُرْآنِ وَالْغَوْ فِيهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَغْلِبُونَ the kuffar used to say, do not listen to this Quran. Don't listen to it at all. And make noise when it is being recited so that you may overcome, so that you may be victorious. You may overpower these people. They knew that the Quran has some power. It's a divine power. It's the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So immediately you find when the Prophet sallallahu would recite a verse, they would take their fingers and put them into their ears. And this was something they used to do put them into their ears but the beauty of it is as soon as they took their hands up towards their ears the verse was over too late the verse is over because i, I hear either shamsu and i lift my hands up by the time i put them in it's, it's already kuwirat is already recited so i put my my fingers in so it gives me an opportunity to think allahu akbar now my ears are closed and i'm busy thinking whoa i just heard either shamsu kuwir that means one day this is what's going to happen to the sun and i've just heard this and then i think okay it's over let me put my fingers down so i put my fingers down <laughs> so what happened it's over by the time i put my hands down when i want to lift it up again what happens the entire verse is recited complete gone finished and my ears are my ears are blocked once again and it's giving me a moment to concentrate so it's a miracle, Wallahi. Nobody could have ever thought that such a short, sharp verse would actually pierce to the deepest point of the heart. Subhanallah. Look at Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu an. We're talking of the miracles of the Quran and the gems in the Quran. He came out with an intention to commit murder. That's what, that's what, that was the intention. And he just read short verses of Surah Taha. مَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْقُرْآنَ لِتَشْقَى We have not revealed this Qur'an to you, O Muhammad wasallam, in order for it to be a point of distress for you, or in order that you fail and so on, you know, you become shaqi, or so that you are saddened and so on. No, the Qur'an is there in order to elevate you. Like Allah says, إِلَّا تَذْكِرَةً لِمَنْ يَخْشَى it is only but a reminder for those who are conscious of Allah, who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you're not conscious of Allah, there won't be a reminder for you in that Quran. If you want to be reminded, you need to have consciousness. You need to have the fear of Allah in you. You need to understand that the competition around us of materialism is short-lived, wallahi. If Allah has blessed you, alhamdulillah, you work hard and you thank Allah, but you do not let that make you forget your main purpose in life. Subhanallah. You are meant to be fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us all. So Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu read the first few verses and he began to cry. His heart was shattered, meaning the hard heart crumbled and softened. So much so that he says, take me to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and you know what happened to Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. What moved him? Few verses of the Quran when he looked at them with the correct heart. How many of us, and this is a cry, we need to continue mentioning this. We finish khatma upon khatma, we complete the Quran so many times. Ramadan, we've done this and we've done that. And wallahi, our lives have not changed. Not changed at all. And those were the men they read two, three verses and they were known thereafter as radiallahu an. Subhanallah. He was a man who dedicated his whole life thereafter. He was a man who championed the cause. He became known as Amirul Mu'mineen, radiyallahu an. Today, if you have to say the name of Umar, there are a group of people who will run away. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who can really elevate the status of Umar ibn Khattab to exactly where it's supposed to be. Radiyallahu an. But what about us? We are living at a time where it's not just a few verses of Surah Taha. But we have access to our phones. We have access to the internet. We have access to the mashayikh of the globe, Wallahi. We have access to anyone. You name him and you will be able to listen to a lecture of his online. Subhanallah. You name him. And yet we are far away from the deen. 
We haven't yet changed our bad ways and habits. We haven't yet prepared for the day we are going to go into the grave and that could be later on tonight and it could be tomorrow. Wallahi. So start doing good deeds. Let's turn to Allah. This is the power of the Quran. Take a look at Najashi. When Ja'far ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an happened to recite a few verses of Surah Maryam. Kaf ha ya sad. ذِكْرُ رَحْمَةِ رَبِّكَ عَبْدَهُ زَكَرِيَّا إِذْ نَادَى رَبَّهُ نِدَاءً خَفِيَّا قَالَ رَبِّ إِنِّي وَهَنَ الْعَظْمُ مِنِّي وَاشْتَعَلَ الرَّأْسُ شَيْبًا وَلَمْ أَكُنْ بِدُعَائِكَ رَبِّ شَقِيَّا These are the verses of Surah Maryam. And what happens to An-Najashi? He breaks down. He breaks down and he weeps. Subhanallah. How many of us weep when we listen to the word of Allah? This man was a Christian and he wept and his tears are mentioned in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about it. وَإِذَا سَمِعُوا مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَى الرَّسُولِ تَرَى أَعْيُنَهُمْ تَفِيضُ مِنَ الدَّمْعِ مِمَّا عَرَفُوا مِنَ الْحَقِّ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا آمَنَّا فَاكْتُبْنَا مَعَ الشَّاهِدِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making mention of the Christians who cried, who wept, and whose tears rolled down their cheeks when they heard the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What about us? How many of us would even take the time to listen to the recitation of the Quran and to be able to be affected by it and impacted by it, yet it is at our fingertips.